Hey, Mud family. Wanted to formally introduce you to this rocket heater I've been working on this last week. It looks kind of big. It is kind of big. It's about as tall as me. It's an eight inch core built out of fire brick. And it's surrounded by about four inches of ceramic insulation right here inside of a uh, metal frame and or sheet metal paneling inside of a uh, stainless steel frame. It's in multiple pieces. This piece down here is the burn chamber. Um, and it's got these handy little mm, loops on it that clamps down so that four people or two people can carry it. <clears throat> when we get it going really hot, it fills with coals like these that can tend to pile up and clog it. So we uh, made this little clean out down here so that uh, we can scrape those out. It really makes a difference when we're firing it as hot as we can. We use super thin pieces of wood. Pine is the stuff that we can get easiest around here. But if we slice it nice and thin, it will burn really hot, really fast, and we can forge with it, actually. Or we can use it to heat a kiln. I'll get to that in a second. But our burn chamber separates for easy portability from our feed tube here. This basically lets us put in wood that's uh, of the normal length around here. Normal length is like 16 inch wood. That means that we can fill this entirely even if there's pieces of uh, coals building up down below. And we can close it down to the extent we need it. We can damp the fire by putting these blocks or putting these blocks partly over it. And this right here is our riser. It separates off of the bottom there, uh, off of the burn chamber. It's uh, two layers, another four inches of ceramic board. You can see down inside of there, burns nice and hot and clean. And this platform on the top is the bottom of a an overhead kiln. This is this bottom platform. It's made out of two inches of ceramic fiberboard. This insulation around the edges is more of a gasket for the top when it comes down. Got some fire brick to protect the ceramic board. And then we have this great uh, platform set up here. We had, at one point, we had like three, three layers here. The idea is that box over there, which is a fairly large box, it's hollow on the inside. It's made out of insulation wrapped around wire to give it kind of a framework but the wire itself would melt if we didn't have it insulated in inside so this is insulated inside and out and uh, you can lift that box here it's hollow underneath lift that box up 
and set it down on top of this kiln and it's about two feet high inside so we got like three or more layers of pottery coming up there and uh, what we found is that we got a fairly effective stratification down at the bottom it was about 1900 degrees and then as we got higher up you can see our cones here the cones tell us the actual temperature it's the point 04 here over here that's most melted the 0.02 and the 1 are slightly melted so it meant we got up to those temperatures and then up here you can see we completely melted these cones over we've got the one cone there that drooped entirely and then the 0.04 and the uh, Next one up, just completely melted. I'll have to look up and post what those are. But we were able to fire and high fire, actually, some pottery. And then glaze it and fire it again. Really worked out well. And um, so the next step here, because we fired this several times, got some good results. Oh, uh, the exhaust actually doesn't go out of the top of that big upside down box. The exhaust goes down, so it has to cool down and leave all the as much of the heat as possible up in the kiln. And then the exhaust goes down here and out and up this pipe and out to keep the exhaust moving fast so that it burns hot and clean down there. So, pretty good success. We got up to about uh, 2,400 degrees in the top third of this chamber up here. Um, and we're able to keep it there long enough to fire everything well. Um, a lot more successful than last year, where we were only able to fire some little tiny sculpture thingies. We were able to fire a whole bunch of stuff this year over here this is about yeah this is about a quarter of it over here we did some other tests on other types of kilns and we got some other stuff our first time we got it too hot and we actually exploded some things that was interesting but yeah pretty successful firing to be able to fire with pine I mean there was one shot where we actually had to use black locust to get it hot enough um, the 2400 I think was from the black locust instead of from the pine because black locust burns a lot hotter um, so our next thing we're going to do is we're going to take off this riser here. It lifts right up. It's got the same types of, uh, handle holds on it. We put a pipe through and then we can lift it up. And when we lift it up, this box, we're calling this box the mini fridge because it eventually will end up with a door here that shuts but the uh, the riser goes right through the middle of it and the door on this side and the door on that side will have uh, small like four inch slots in them so that we can reach in and uh, without opening the whole door and cooling it down we can reach in and uh, place metal for forging Eventually, we will have built a crucible that fits in this box as well. But this box sits under our riser where it's hottest and uh, should give us uh, the ability to melt aluminum and, uh, and to 
um, get steel hot enough to forge. So that's tomorrow's task. So stay tuned. Uncle Mud here at Wheaton Labs in sunny Montana.